to today, uh, more specifically including DGIT. Uh, DDIT is the dual of this arc involution theorem, and it's not as complicated as its name suggests. So yeah. Okay, I'll probably I should probably send the handout first. So. I will. Okay, uh, yeah, there is a hand up. Uh, okay, uh, I guess I'll start. Uh, what else? Uh, you have a demo? Oh yeah, today we're going to be featuring GeoGebra because why not? I don't think it's even possible to do it using something other. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, I'm assuming that people, most, a lot of the people here, uh, uh, especially the moppers, uh, already know the some basics about projective, but I guess I'll go over some basics of projective, but then I'll dive into like DDIT and stuff. So, uh, what is projective geometry? It's basically just a geometry where the angles don't matter, and the only thing that matters is lines, and conics, and their intersections or tangencies. So, uh, the, even without the angles, you can still derive a lot of results, and DDIT is one of them. So, uh, after this, I, I think I'll introduce some uh, simple projective results. Uh, So, okay, define the random. I'll just pick the random point. Uh, normally, I do not use, but okay. Uh, now we can. Now we pick some arbitrary line. Uh, say like that. Then the claim is then like one of the. Most important results of projective is that uh, this, like a lot of projective is about something called a cross ratio. Um, a cross ratio is basically uh, how do I put it? Uh, a way of expressing how, how four points are like positioned, but like it has uh, a lot of meaning and and like is preserved under a lot of projective stuff. So yeah. So uh, I'll talk. So I'll go through the Cheva Menelaus conflict first. So what that is is, it's, so what that means is like, uh, these. So these four points along the horizontal line form a half cross ratio negative one, or also known as a harmonic bundle. Uh, and the harmonic bundles are like, like a third of projective Olympiads. So yeah. Just make so yeah that this is this is the Cheva Menelaus config where like the points the four points along along the horizontal line have a cross ratio negative one and I and cross ratios are you can project them from like one point onto another so if I like draw uh, another line like say. If we draw an arbitrary line like that, uh, that then like the the four, the four points that like are the uh, if I project the the points onto the new line, then the cross ratio is still negative one. Although cross ratio is always preserved, usually people only care about the case the negative one case. Well, unless it's like Amy or something.
why is that not connected? So yeah, see, it's see the cost ratio is like still the same thing even after like I projected stuff on the different lines. So that's what is known as a perspectivity. And perspectivity is can you not only can you like project from one line into another, you can project into a circle. You can project from a like a point onto like from a circle to itself. Also, and if and if the circle passes through the point, then you can project onto any line. So I think. Uh, Okay, discard previous thing. Okay, say random circle. Why am I using intersection? So this is the, why is that? What? So in the other the other main result is that I can project from a circle onto a line. And the reason for all the reason the reason for why this such a cross ratio is preserved is because uh it all devolves into the sign of angles around the around the line. And those are those angles are directed just to like make the property nice. Uh, actually, geo, I don't think GeoGebra allows cross ratios on circles, which is kind of sad. Uh, I don't think it allows cross ratio GHD, BTDE, but eh, whatever. Oh, what? Yeah, it, does, it doesn't allow it. But anyway, cross ratio along a circle is defined the exact same way as for along a line. But for other conics, it's more annoying than that. I think, wait, actually, I think cross ratios are still defined the same way on the other conics. But I'm not sure, I don't know, I'm not sure because like most Olympia idea doesn't involve non circular conics anyway. I hope to change that, but at the moment, that's not the case. So uh, the last the last thing about about like cross ratios is uh, I'll draw a circle again. Uh, so projecting from a circle onto itself from like a point not on the circle. Well, that point could be on the circle, but then that wouldn't do anything. Let's draw a random point. And the reason why you can project from a circle onto itself is because in because cross ratio is preserved under inversion, apparently. I say apparently because because I'm I'm not like I never bothered to verify that was true, but it has to be true if inversion is to be if like the cross ratio is to be preserved from projecting from a circle onto itself. So yeah. And again, GeoGebra doesn't allow cross ratio doesn't allow cross ratios for a non collinear point, which is kind of sad. Okay, I got okay. Uh, what which one of the warm ups do y'all want to do? I put some ran random problems together and was too lazy to put most common. Okay, uh, I guess I'll let democracy run its path. Uh, the, what do y'all want to, what problems, what problems in the warm up section do y'all want to do? Yes, the match in fire. So, yeah. Uh, I think some of these were discovered. Some of the projected solutions to the Amy warmups were discovered by uh, Eric Shen, but uh, I discovered them independently, so he sort of anticipated them, I guess. 
So I guess I'll do 1.1 simply because I'm salty about not solving it during the actual class. Okay. Uh, what is that called? Draw unit circle because I'm lazy. Okay, well, let a equal to zero. Uh, now I can flip the random point D in the plane. I don't know. I think that do it. Why isn't that doing anything? Oh, wait. I'm fine. B not. Yes, I'm there. Oh, bro. Okay, I'm gonna stop key point for more common sense location. Wait, huh? Okay, sure, I'll go with the key point here like that. Anyway, uh the claim is that if I if I draw a few more lines, uh why isn't your driver responding? Wait, did your driver crash? Why isn't anything like happening? Your Debra crash moment. <laughs> Looks like I have to redraw then. In the imitation of Evan Chen, I will let you off my keyboard noises instead of actually talking. I don't know, I'll just put something random. Oh, no, not one nine. That's somewhere random. Well, actually, this problem is fairly projective apart from the part. Apart from the fact that the that the that the conic described in the problem is a circle. Actually, I think I actually the problem would hold if it was an ellipse or something. Okay, watch that here. Then. Very efficient field that way. I don't know, I'll just call the intersection X prime or whatever. But anyway, I anyway, this problem I thought it was funny because because it's nuked by projective and like in the class, we were taught to like find some long winding inversion solution. Why is what is going on? Uh, what do these means? I can't even read them. Uh, what is the other one? Okay, I'll just call the other point B time. I have terrible at naming. I pressed enter to early. Huh? Okay, the claim is that in the diagram right now, I took forever to draw, even though it's like really simple. Uh, P prime is the midpoint of X prime, Y prime. And that's, and that's, and if you project onto the, and if you project onto the, circle omega I have drawn here, but I'm calling it W because lazy. Uh, th then it then you get then you can get the then you can get uh I, I need to define another point. 
Oh wait, I forgot to define another. So the oh yeah, the other really important result in projective is that in this in what is below, uh, it's really important to know that uh, x y c a r form like are like harmonic. Uh, in other words, have cross ratio of negative one. Okay, I'll highlight the point. Well, well, it's not even that much of a showcasing example, but again, humorous purposes. Very. So yeah, those four red points form harmonic bundle by some well-known theorem. Uh, so how would you prove it is, uh, we can simply note that AX by CX is equal to AY by CY. Uh, why is that a function? And actually by symmetry, uh, AX by CX is, you can make it into a ratio along the line I'm highlighting right now. Oh, wait, why did I just open this thing? Uh, the well-known theorem, uh, so one, one, one of the conflicts was the uh, Chaba Mandel also earlier. Uh, the other one was, the other one is the one I'm showing right now with, with the four red points along the circle here. And and if these four points form a harmonic, this go it goes the other way too. And I think that's been used in a lot of problems, like the harmonic implying the concurrency. So in general, harm, harmonics are are like used quite quite like often in like problems like these. Okay, if you can see now that these ratios are the same, my area but like plug. Why is this thing like So yeah, these ratios are the same. I don't know if you can tell because there's like that gray thing that's like obscuring everything. Okay, there we go. Just type something random to get it out of the way. So yeah, that's basically the, the idea. And the, and it's it's not hard, too hard to show that like, oh, well, we need to introduce the point at infinity. The point at infinity is it's different from the one in inversion. Uh, inversion, there's only one point at, in, at infinity. It's representing the image of a center of inversion, but in projective, there's one point at infinity for every direction, put it that way. The other way to put it is for each set of parallel lines, but in projective, coinciding lines are basic, are treated as parallel lines, so yeah. Okay, should I go over past that? Anyway, uh, to, to write it up, because I'm, did I open a view like that? I guess I'll open a view. Oh, never mind. So, uh, I'll just type it here because I don't know how to comment. So the other oh yeah, notational convention is that infinity subscript x y just means the point at infinity in the direction x y, and if we put and putting a perpendicular here, I don't think that's readable. But this is like an Erickson convention, but like yeah, 
why is there an extra set of bra brackets? Well, this is not a valid GeoGebra function anyway. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, on the reason um the midpoints are relevant are relevant to projective here is because a uh, cross ratio involving a midpoint and the and the point at infinity is like um, is usually means harmonic because the the ratio of like two points and another one infinitely far away it the limit approaches one so they just define it as one and that's the same ratio as the midpoint but like negative so bad. so yeah that's like simple that's like the simplest example I'm also sort of salty about the Amy. I think I'll go over how to project if those. So uh, I don't know. For 1.2 here is, is like trivialized. So I'll go over what's not immediate. I'll go over 1.4 because it's not immediately trivialized, but there, but it, ha it can give you some instruction. Okay, good. Okay, uh, so this is an Amy problem I'm very salty about not solving. Uh, if I had solved it, then I would have made JAML, and instead I didn't. I saw a lot of long winded synthetic solutions, but I think the projective solution is like 100 times more elegant. Okay, draw unit circle again. Okay, what else in the problem? Uh, draw a random point. Oh yeah, disclaimer, I am not pr promoting the use of GeoGebra on math concepts. I would not like to be associated with, with such dishonesty. But I cannot draw a. But my circles on paper are potato shaped, despite the fact that I do freehand geo. So if I need to present, I I go back to GeoGebra anyway. Okay. Now we have to draw this other. Now I have to draw the other two circles. What are those? Uh, internally tangent to omega. Okay, that means that we can construct it like. An object. So the dilation factor is basically just homothetic. So, yeah. I do not care about the names used in the top. Oh, no. You named the wrong thing, haha. Okay. Uh, omega A is constructed in a similar manner. And then you just specify center. So yeah, those are the three circles after like an hour of typing. So uh, what are we asked to do then? Uh, circle omega. Circles intersect at point Q distinct from C. Okay. So the first thing I do when I see three circles in a problem and this and like two and like they seem to have like nice correlations the first thing i do is look at the radical center and that works project and the, and that's how i found the projective solution 
uh, so bad. Which one is I referring to? I'm to yeah, it's that one. Okay, what are we? What's the rest of the problem? AP is five, PB is three, and XY is eleven. Okay, that seems like top standard already. So, uh, the, from my Raxus intuition, uh, what I did was, we know that two of these Raxes are. Uh, I mean, this is just a common tangent. And by radical center, uh, let's say I, let's say those two tangent lines intersect at. Then uh, we can draw. Line. Then PQ should also pass through this point because, like, radical axes. And yeah. Well, I could be more specific, but yeah. Uh, X Y equals L. Oh wait, we we were supposed to draw X, X and Y in the first place. Oh, at that point. Oh, we already used that name on pi. Why did I call that accident? And we made it to Wow. Anyway, the first thing I notice is that ABXY in the diagram we have here is harmonic and the and the radical center I'm calling K instead of X because X was using the original problem. I kind of forgot about that. I have actually ran into this reuse point name issue in a, in like uh, in proposing problems to that's it's not funny. But anyway, the claim here is that we if we use power of a point spam, then this then k k p q q is equal to kx ky because of power of point. This is. Oh, yeah, same, same. And the, the next part of, and to like actually make progress in the problem, if you have a keen eye, then you can notice that Q is the midpoint of X5. But this is actually a, another like famous lemma. Oh, So, uh, how do we prove this? Uh, it's, it's, a mid, it's called midpoints of harmonic bundles lemma. Uh, the proof of it is kind of routine. Uh, it's like because it's just along one line, it it evolves into plain algebra. So too lazy. But anyway, there is a lemma saying that saying that like the midpoint here has some properties. B is the same point as Q from up here. That point is just redundant. Yeah. Okay, let's see the rest of the problem. Uh, the power of P with respect to the big circle is negative 15. XY is 11. Okay. Uh,
Although this is although I should probably although I should probably open the beamer, I'm still too lazy. So uh we write And then this is, and then the, the last one is, and then this, the last sentence is just different, different of squares, the, the other direction. And, but, rem, but remember, we already know what QX is. Oh, what? Quick. Oh wait, no one can see the beam, but what am I doing? I'm new to it. Oh wait, no one can see the the beamer, right? How do I make thing open in the room? I can probably turn entire screen. Wait, does it share the entire screen? Ah, uh, we need to be sure entire screen. I think this is easy. Is this the entire screen? Or can I like go to a different window and y'all can see? I just realized I should probably detach the PDF viewer here. There we go. Okay. Now I can just share the beamer only. Very nice. I'll get the DDIT eventually. Um. Okay, what, what was I thinking here was early on GeoGebra? Yes, very efficient. Wow, well, that's very efficient. Yeah. That. Okay, yeah, the rest of the problem is just algebra.
and is much shorter than the synthetic solution. Yeah, I'll make a type of page and all that. My text fails. Oh yeah, that problem isn't there. Uh, I'll, I'll probably go on to the other set. Like, this one is, this one is, I'll do this 2.2. 2.2 is the one I thought myself, so I probably remember the solution better. Did I not log in? Oh. Does it not say? Nice. Zero is not sensitive on keyboard for them. Okay. Uh, open yet another one. Okay, I'll go over the China Southeast problem now. Uh, I guess you'll need to refer to the handout. These are all like dots. So some isosceles triangle. Well, I done this problem myself, so I remember the harmonic. I remember it took me forever to like get one of the uh to get the harmonics right. It was like I missed a really trivial observation or something. Why does it hold? Uh, oh. Okay. Hmm? Oh. Yeah, I'll probably change the point of it. Yeah, it should be better. Okay, what's the rest of the problem? Uh, I thought that these triangles, I haven't even gone to DBI yet. Uh -huh, I should probably move on. But I, I cannot resist the urge to go over this problem. Again. Why is here Debra crashing again? Uh, what else do we need to do? Uh, point D is on Omega with a D E equal to ninety degree. Okay. And then we have to draw the circle of diameter A E. Uh 
Oke, okay, tak poin itu. Oh, yeah, one. Okay, what is the rest of the problem say? A tangent line of omega passes through G and hits AC at K. It's AC at some random point K. Okay, this problem is close to projective. So the first thing I tried was to try to get the harmonics right. And on first try, that took forever, probably because I didn't have that much experience. What? Okay, now we want to prove that BK bisects BF. Not using the gamer that much. Follow the plot. Let's uh, probably write this down. I should probably write this down. So here, the first thing we do is there are two possibilities. Uh, so the, I started with the cross ratio along this line EF here, and I don't, and I wanted to project it onto something else nicer, and I didn't like, I didn't, I dislike doing it out from K because then I can't make use of the Point head infinity anyway, so then I choose I chose to project on to project from B. Yeah, something. So yeah, it's a, I'm kind of slow at checking because I never learned how. Here, uh, when when uh, when there's a point name over an equality sign, it means that for the when we're pro it means that we're projecting a cross ratio from that that point. But as to what line or circle or whatever we're projecting to and from, it it doesn't really matter because it's implied from the, the other points already. Okay, I think I don't remember that well. I think we projected onto AC. So then, uh, then all of the points work out nicely. So it just becomes AFKC. And then after this, for that's where I started like clowning. And no, it didn't take me, it took me shorter than that to type a simple statement. Uh, after this, this is, this is where I kind of got stuck. So then I was like trying to project onto some other points and they didn't work. Uh, I don't remember, but somehow I thought of projecting from D. So then I had, then I had to define some more things because I wanted to get rid of K because K was defined in terms of G. So it made, it made sense to define in terms of G. So then we end up drawing AG. And then it didn't look like I could project onto any other conics here. So not, why did I say conics? Uh, any other, um, any of the lines. So I ended up projecting onto the circle. So I don't know what you call that 
a prime or whatever. Anyway, projecting onto the circle, f and c, f and c, f stays fixed. Uh, a goes to a prime. Uh, k goes to d. Uh, and then c goes to some other point. I thought this was ugly at first, so that's why I I didn't like find out that quickly. It was like really early. Oh. Oh. Again, bad name. So now we end up with D D F A prime. D F uh, D C prime A prime and F. Oh, yeah, I should probably oh, I forgot to text that. So then I was thinking about why this this had to be harmonic. Uh, that's when I realized that we should have the C A prime tangent to the circle if we want the the quadril the last the last cross ratio to be harmonic. And to prove that tangent was. I took I took a while for some reason. Uh, hmm, let me recall how how did I how is it tangent to the circle again? Oh yeah, right. Uh, here uh the the, the claim is that a prime and e are antipodes on the circle. Like antipode means just means opposite opposite, and like endpoints of the same diameter. That's basically antipode. So, yeah. The reason that a prime a prime is the antipode because similar triangles at a like a uh, ADE is ninety degrees implies that implies that it's an antipode. Typing speed is abysmal. Very, very efficient. Okay, here the last equality does not mean I'm projecting it onto something. From here, I think synthetic from here is synthetic carry, so yeah. Excuse me, excuse me, but when will the class be over? Well, I'm not in a position to answer such questions. Oh, I forgot double. So bad. Uh anyway, after this I 
I think Beamer is a bad idea, but eh, whatever. Oh wait. Oh wait, the, the fact that a prime year and the voice is just trivial. Uh then after this I so that means that I rotated uh so because E is the touch point on A B, if I rotate it 180 degrees, I should get another touch point. The idea is that like we can sort of complete the figure to get a wrong but So yeah, to, if if I if I add in the if I make this look like a rhombus, then the then then Y C A prime touches the circle is more obvious. Although I think in most solutions of the problem they omit the rhombus, and I'm in my solution when I wrote it up was no exception. So yeah, that that's what the, so yeah that completes the problem I think. Okay, now I need to get to DDIT and all that because I'm because I'm going over time. Okay. Uh, there are some other problems that are like on there that I'm not going over because I'm clearly short on time. So I guess I'll force people to read my hand up. Okay, there. Uh, this problem? I'll go on to DDIT now. So what so DDIT is probably gonna be even more painful to GeoGebra, but I have no better way. The person I learned it from, in fact, also did also ha like was not able to do it like manually. So yeah. An involution is so yeah, that's so so here's what involution is. It's on the handout. So I think I'll, so. Now I'll go over the the use demo examples. I guess. All right, and I should probably draw a diagram for DDIT and DIT first. Uh, so uh, what is DIT? I'll, I'll just draw a circle instead of a conic. Draw four random points. Oh, I need to draw a dummy fifth point. It's probably gonna be a hyperbola, or it's gonna be a lip. Okay. This is the kind of thing. This is the kind of thing. It, it, here, you have a crashes on. I think. Okay, I'll just stick with the new list and pretend E doesn't make sense. Okay, so let's just write. Anyway, the claim for DDIT, uh, sorry, DIT is I need to draw an actually, I need to draw an arbitrary one. Why am I so sloppy about it? Probably because I don't use it that much. Speed. 
Okay, I should probably extend some of these. Oh, wait, no. I'll just make these lines and cover the diagram. Yeah, these need to be lines. Okay. I do. Why does my head type what I say instead of what it's supposed to be typed? What's the kind of name? Bash keys. Yeah, so that's kind of annoying. Why would it take over that? Yeah. So slow. Okay, yeah. Now we have finally finished extending everything. I need to recolor this red so that's distinct from all the other lines. Anyway, I'll sign, I'm going to quote unquote assign the problems on the handout as quote unquote homework, although no one is interested in doing such work. Well, other than maybe a geomain, but probably a geomain has already done those problems anyway. Okay, um, now, I'll call, now I'll color off. I think the quadrilateral in DIT is actually not that important here. Yeah. Color. Why are those my words? Yeah. Anyway, uh, what DIT says is Okay, I'll just say it like that. Uh, now uh, we have to draw a load of intersections. The claim is that for DDIT, no, DIT, the claim is that it, there's an involution swapping the pairs of points that I've like taken forever to draw. What is this? Bronx. Oh, uh, no one, I don't, oh wait, no one actually saw that thing? I've been counting the entire time. Can I share multiply one? Oh, I can't share multiply one. Right. Okay, don't say that. It's fox pairs of points along the line, although sometimes this isn't that obvious. Especially because like power can be negative sometimes. That's so one of the things to be noted about DIT is that the intersect the intersections of the conic are of the conic with the red line here are usually not even noted or you or like used in the problem statement. Well, not statement like solution. Why did I define intersection? Q, Q keyboard and mouse noises. Part one moment.
So yeah, the what DDI what DIT does is swap pairs of points here that along the red lines that I've colored the same color. Right, that's the mistake. And not only does it swap these three pairs of points, it swaps the two points on the circle too. So shrug. The theorem isn't that useful in general. So yeah, I'll probably go to butterfly now. Forgot the class. Actually, I'll go straight to the to the use symbol problem. So, uh, refer uh, refer to the twenty twelve use symbol problem on there. I think it's section four or something. Very good. What's the problem? And I kind of forgot myself. Oh wait, I still don't know about it. I'm going over butterfly theorem right now. Mm, no. More points along the way. I think most people know what butterfly is. Okay, what is I kind of found out A B and C. Okay, butterfly is okay. Oh, I accidentally put it. Your job is like half not responding today. Why And this point, if, as you can see, coincides with them. So yeah, that's the butterfly theorem statement. And how do we apply DIT to this? Uh, we can look at the, we can look at the PQ as a line. If I change this to line instead, then we can yeah treat that as a line. Okay. 
and these are raised because I don't know why. By symmetry, uh, if we like switch like A and C, then the result still holds. So here for DIT, we actually use the pairs all on the circle. Oh, there's all. And the uh, the idea and its dual are determined by two pairs of points. That's how involutions are. So it's so that so what usually happens is we use the theorem to get three pairs, and using two pairs we already know, and we determine what the transformation is, and then using the third one we can extract some non-trivial information. So in here, uh, what we would do is. Because we already know that. Oh, wait, why are we going? So we already know here that m is the midpoint of PQ. So, so if there's an involution along this black black point, let me recolor that. So involution along this blue line. Uh, we already have two pairs, PQ and m with itself. So yeah. then if then we can note that it also swaps x y by the theorem. So the uh, so the first two points give us the the that the involution is just reflection in M. So this reflection in M must watch x and y, which gives the theorem. There's a I learned the synthetic proof somewhere really long. But that was not very easy to remember. I I think it was a good idea not to remember it. So yeah, this, there isn't that much to this theorem. So if we do something, this is still work. Oh yeah, that's, that's butterfly. Okay, uh, but, okay, now what is DDIT? This is gonna be a much more cluttered diagram. How do I draw a random cone next? So, so we take projective duals here. Our projective duals is also known as reciprocation. It's the pole and polar thing. I personally am not fluent in poles and polar, so will not comment too much. Now I have to draw a load of tangents. Now I have to take an arbitrary point in the plane. Let me get rid of A and B. A and B are useful. Now I have to consider the pairwise intersections of these things. Yeah, that's probably a more readable diagram. Okay, uh, so. This is the, the dual uh, intersect. The more intersections. So the So what the theorem says is, the first two points I've labeled here uh, are swapped by some involution on on the lines through P. So 
and likewise for the other pairs. It's more useful to think of the quadrilateral as being consist consisting of the four lines instead of like four of its vertices. Now we draw like a lot more lines. Does it all even make sense? Okay, that's like a billion lines. They're probably recolor them. Again. Okay, pick another thing. What do you want to do? So here's the picture. Color coded now. So what DDIT says is that for like the there's an involution at the point P here, which is labeled multiple times for reasons unexplained. Oh, I clicked it like God. Okay, so yeah, the blue lines, the red lines, the magenta lines, and the green lines are the are swapped by some involution at P. And as with all projective things, we can project it onto a line, well, any line, as long as it doesn't pass through P, because that would like give no information. So if I project onto, let's say this line, I don't know what to call it. Probably you color that. Maybe the other other color. Ha ha ha. But if I define some intersections along this line, then then there, there, the involution along the pencil lines through P corresponds to another involution along this purple line here. So th that conversion of DIT is from like DDIT to an involution along line. It's sometimes used, but to be completely honest, I do not have the skill to do it a lot, a lot of times. It's kind of hard. More topography problems. The colors are slightly different, but not really that much of my picking. Yeah, so projecting onto a line gets us something like this. And then this, and then I'd estimate like it'd be something in between. So an involution would be like the negative member division centered on a point like somewhere here, say, I don't know. So yeah, that's the DDIT statement. I don't think that, as, as with, 
isolate the it where the intersections with the uh, with the circumconic are not are not used in ddit the tangents from the point to the clinic are not used either i hope to change that Uh, so I'll move on to the, okay, I'll probably get to the problems now. Okay, uh, let's, I, I think the, I think the USAMO problem is quite instructive, although it is somewhat trivial. Trivial. Well, it's not. It's trivial as long as as long as you use BDIT. But without it, I don't even know if there is a non-complex hash solution. Because as far as I know, the only other solution is bash. So it's so it's uh, it's on my it's it's like the five point one on my handout, and so a picture would be. Yeah. And the funny thing is, this actually is an effective way of drawing a diagram. Okay, what's the rest of the problem? Oh, we need the P as an arbitrary point along the line. I think moving. Okay, moving D down here gives a better perspective, I think. Okay, what's the rest of the problem? I don't even remember. Uh, A prime, B prime, C prime, other points for X line. C, A, P, B, B, C. Okay, draw lines through P, C. Yeah. Let's see all the points. So I'll just do angle B E F. Oh. And must have done something wrong. What? Can you see the other point? Well, 
where is the third point? Oh. I forgot the time. There. Okay. Uh, well, I actually heard DDIT before of doing of doing the problem that was trivialized by it. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, directly, I think we have to define a phantom point to be able to apply the theorem. And clearly, the involution we want is going to be reflection in the line L, which is in this diagram, it's just the x axis. The PAL gives so these slightly different colors. Uh, I don't know. Just use these colors again. Okay, uh, if you, I think this looks like DDIT already. Anyway, uh, the idea is that we should we need to define a pan, phantom point, like uh, like so. Oh, good. Control D. So these are just the same point. Anyway, uh, so we so we applied the theorem to a, which quadrado? Uh, here I think it's we can, I think it's this one. I think it's this one. Uh, and that means that, that means that, uh, oh, I didn't get the wrong one. But it's, but the idea is that so, because there's an involution swapping things like this, then we can get the green lines that, that the green lines are swapped. But then there's like a phantom point thing. And once we prove that the that the green lines are reflections of each other over the x-axis here, that, which is just done by noting that the other two lines are swapped by that reflection. And, that, and then that would just finish the problem because phantom point. Uh, 
So yeah, that's the that's B, an example of BDIT without the inconic, where the inconic it has no existence. And I think the motivation for the problem was entirely this, because they just wanted to ahem ahem make an obscure problem, uh, an obscure result into a problem. Ahem ahem ahem. So yeah, that that's all there is to the use of more problems. Uh, there is a complex the complex batch solution. I think I sort of remember it was like it was like using conjugates. Uh, overall. I, I was not able to accurately work through that complex batch, so I gave the hell up on that. Anyway, this is the use of it. Okay. Uh, what, okay, I guess I'll make the remaining population vote on what problem to do. But I, oh wait, there's a type one here. This is, here, this should be CJMO, but whatever. Oh, it's seven thirty something. Uh, okay. Uh, what what can I try? Yeah. Uh, okay. Since no one cares, I think I'll just do one of these. Uh, long silence here. Uh, actually, I've never done the Serbia problem. I think I'll try the Serbia problem, but just be warned, I I do not know the solution to the problem as of now. Uh, short, uh, the last problem here is, is, is sort of like on here as for humorous purposes. Uh, he told me it's uh, the person whose name is attributed. He told me not to say it, but I decided to put it on the set just like for humorous purposes. Um, what is this? So we have the two common tangents to the so circumcircle and x circle reach the line at two points. Prove that some these pair points are. I saw them. What? I think this wasn't actually that complicated to draw. I can have better. Can we draw an X circle in GeoGebra again? I actually don't know. Bro, there isn't a function for it. Okay.
Hmm. Oh, wait. Very young. I actually don't know this one. Okay, yeah, it doesn't exist. Not in the encyclopedia either. I'm using in center access and I'm to construct the Yeah. Do I have common tenants might be painful? Actually, in shortlist twenty twenty one D eight, they also use this thing and. I had no choice but to moving points there. How do we talk? Okay, how do we talk? Uh... This is not as convenient as previously thought. On business research methods.
So now I think we actually got it now. Hide the old circle. And the camera too. Yay, took that long. Okay. Anyway, intersection. Oh yeah, how are people still how are people not completely bored out yet? Uh, how do we apply DDI to this? I think it should be an evolution at the end. Okay, what other points can we swap to the uh, this thing? Oh, Hmm. Uh, what do we do here? I haven't, I haven't done this problem before. And half of a geometer's life is staring at it, staring at a diagram, not knowing what to do. Although that gives, that gives satisfaction when you solve it. So. Uh, actually, I actually have to sort of think what to do. Okay, I think I think the tangency points here are going to be useful. I'll just call those C prime and Q prime. Okay. Uh, hmm. I don't know what to do. Uh, okay, I'll draw a AI and the angle bisector. And that induces the midpoint. All that I made.
Hmm? Oh. Oh, that's true now. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, how do we use, how how do we even use DDIT here? Well, I heard from other people it was DDITable, but so the solution has to exist. Okay. Can anyone else contribute any ideas? Okay, can anyone else help me with this? I'm like not a, not a complete genius. Or I, rather, to be more humble, I'm washed that deal. Oh, what do we do here? I don't know what to do actually. Okay, draw random lines. Uh, I I think we got to connect some segments. There you go. I have to eat dinner. The time class for the end is at six thirty. It's okay. Uh, people can leave as they want. Although I hope that people will stay and help me solve the problem. And I don't think this is going to be very entertaining to put on YouTube either. <laughs> I was sure if I wait, why is there like a, a tangent line in the middle of nowhere? What? Oh, some red, some dumb syntax here. Okay, I didn't the line again. Where the hell is it? Hmm. What do we do? Okay, I'm out of ideas. Hmm, DDIT is not always straightforward, apparently. Donk. Uh, someone help me. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, huh? Hmm. Oh, wait. Those segments are those segments are parallel. How do you prove that? Okay, uh, 
Let me see. Are those segments parallel? Uh, I I can't tell immediately. Um, I think I have to be angle chasing along the y sector, but oh. I think I think this is angle chase or not. Bonk, I need idea. Okay, uh, what are we doing? Uh, hmm. Look, external bisector of that thing. That should be perpendicular. Okay, now what? Okay, I I I probably solve solve this problem in this minute. Hmm. Why is that true? Oh. Oh, it's just angle chasing. Never mind. Those two segments are parallel. Actually, I think, let me see if the in center does anything. Then I can do like harmonic stem. Uh, like, are there any cyclic? Are there any cyclic costs? Oh wait, oh wait. Uh, a A I P P prime is cyclic, I think, because of Rhine's theorem. I'm high. Okay, can we get to the DDIT already? I'll draw the other one. The quick part is fun.
Hmm, that means that. How did does that solve the problem? Then we 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 want the thing to bisect the angle. Okay, so uh, we want angle P A I A equal to Q A I A or the negative zero. After that, uh, what do we do? Uh, angle chasing gives something like. PPIA, I don't think it gets the right thing. Hmm. I think we should be close to finish. I think this problem is close to finish, and somehow I don't think this looks like VDIP. Uh, I think there's a, I think I might, I think I might be close to the synthetic solution. Um, why is PP prime Q Q prime is not P A prime. What is what is Ryan even doing here? Hmm, let me join the let me join the analogs for the or rather symmetric variant. Oh, uh, that's why it's not doing. Okay, color those that color as well. Why are those the same? Ah, oh, so bad. Oh wait, so that's tangent to the circle. I'm um, high. That's literally just. Symmetry of, of about the line of centers. Bruh. Okay, I pronounce I pronounce this problem solved. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>